<laughs> I bought 34 books while I had pneumonia. I also have eight pre-orders here. I don't, I don't want to talk about it, but I do want to talk about it because it means I can make my very first unboxing video. I tend to buy way too many books when I'm sick or sad, and in March I was more sick than I've been in a very long time. And I was not home, so while I was convalescing at my dad's, these boxes were piling up at my house. I'm gonna give a disclaimer here. Almost all of these are bought from Pango which if you don't know, it's a secondhand book website where you can buy books from readers, you can sell books to other readers, but they're recycled books and they're way less expensive than buying from a store, which makes me feel at least a little bit better about the show in front of me. Also, if you're not already using Pango to buy your books, it's a wonderful website and it puts money back in the pockets of readers and you can sell your own books on there. This video is not sponsored by Pango. I just love them so much. Although, the next video could be sponsored, Pango, if you're up to it. Aside from Pango, there's gonna be a small handful of pre-orders from Barnes & Noble and a small handful of Amazon packages. I found out that I had Amazon credit, so according to Girl Math, all of the Amazon books were technically free. And the majority of the Amazon packages are books that you guys told me to buy and to read, so I wanted them to get to me right away. Anyway, let's just start. I have my scissors, I'm ready to go. Okay. First is a book called The Down Days. It's a dystopian sci-fi book. In the aftermath of a deadly outbreak, Cape Town, South Africa is losing its mind with residents experiencing hallucinations, paranoia, and uncontrollable laughter. Is it simply another episode of mass hysteria or something more sinister? Pandemic book. I think I feel ready to read a pandemic book at this point. Bunny. I'm late as hell to this book, and I know it. This was like a book talk darling, either last year or the year before. I've heard it's a little bit dark academia, very unhinged. This girl gets sucked into a clique of rich girls at her school who all call each other Bunny, and then things just get insane from there. So that's book two. This is gonna be such a big pile of books. Oh, hell yeah. See, I wish I could put them closer, but I can't because I turned my autofocus off so that the sounds would stop happening. This is as close as it's gonna get. This Thing Between Us by Gus Moreno. It's a horror book and it seems to be about a man whose wife dies and then we... Hey. No. Sorry, if you hear any background noise at all, it's most likely coming from, coming from her. This is Egg. Hi. Anyway, it's a horror book and it seems to be about a man whose wife dies and then AI starts taking over his life and hunting him. I don't know, that might be totally wrong. The back is kind of confusing. Okay, this is a Barnes and Noble pre-order. <laughs> Which one are you? <sighs> yeah. A Short Walk Through a Wide World by Douglas Westerbeek. And this is the book that I talked about in my Q1 vibe check and springtime recommendations. And this is about a woman who, and it was confusing when I read it the first time, gets cursed and has to keep wandering, just keep walking around the world or else she's gonna bleed to death. And I cannot wait to read it. It sounds very strange. And I want to read all about her adventures. Okay, this is so much fun. This is so much fun. This is so much more fun than if I was just opening these by myself. Next is, oh yeah, someone on here told me to get Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman, but specifically the author's preferred text version, which is longer, I think by kind of a long shot. So Neverwhere is about a man who stops to help a girl, a bleeding girl. Oh, lots of, lots of bleeding girls here. A man who stops to help a bleeding girl and then slips through the cracks of reality and lands in Neverwhere, a London of shadows and darkness, monsters and saints, murderers and angels that exist entirely in a subterranean labyrinth. Portal fantasy, F yeah. What should we do next? Let's do this one next. 
There are two books in here. How, how the hell? Oh my god. How do I even get in? Oh, come on. Ah. Okay, two books in here. One of them is another book that I'm late to, and that is Boy Parts by Eliza Clark, about a photographer who takes explicit photos of men that she persuades to model for her, and it kind of seems like she winds up removing them from existence. More unhinged women, more good for her literature. And then the second is something cool. It's more of a coffee table book. It's Into Thin Air by John Krakauer, which is a well-known book by a well-known author, but this is the illustrated edition. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, this is so cool. I believe it's about a man who is scaling Mount Everest, but this is the illustrated edition, so I get all of these neat photos in it. Wow. Fantastic Land by Mike Bakoven. Bakoven, which is about a theme park where a hurricane hits and everyone's trapped in the theme park. And then when the authorities reach them weeks later, there's chaos all over the place, like Lord of the Flies in a theme park. Oh yeah, a modern take on Lord of the Flies meets Battle Royale. Books and Lala has a book club. So we're reading it sometime in the next like two months. So, Fantastic Land. Next is, okay, another one that was recommended by one of you guys, and that is The Obsidian Mirror by Katherine Fisher. What does it say? Its power is great and terrible. Men have been lost in the obsidian mirror, the dead brought back to life through it, and the future annihilated by it. Or this is what will happen unless the mirror is destroyed. Three people seek the mirror. The first has been sent from the future to shatter it. The second will protect the mirror at all costs, obsessed with its power. And the third needs the mirror to find a murdered father and save his life, but only one can succeed. So I was told it is portal fantasy, and I had never heard of it before, which is kind of unusual, but I'm a people pleaser, I was told to purchase it, and so I bought it. You know what? Let's do a... Let's do a box. No, let's not do a box. We're gonna save the... I've got two big boxes that I'm gonna save for the end, because they are intimidating. Holiday Country by Incia Trek. And this is about a 19-year-old girl who spends every summer in a Turkish seaside town with her mother and grandmother at the family villa. No matter how much Ada feels she belongs to the country where her mother grew up, deep down her connection to the culture feels as fleeting as the seasons. When a mysterious man from her mother's past shows up in their town, Ada can't help imagining a different future for her mother, one that promises a return to the vibrant woman she was before a disappointing marriage moved her abroad. But while playing matchmaker, Ada has to come to terms with her own intensifying attraction. So uh, that sounds sketchy. Oh, come on. Almost. Almost. The pull tab almost made it the whole way. Another Barnes Noble pre-order. And that, yes. I talked about this one too in the spring recommendations and I finally have it. And so like I said, now I will not be stopped. This is Instructions for Traveling West by Joy Sullivan. This is a book of poetry by a woman that I have followed the career trajectory of for years. It says it's a lush debut collection that examines what happens when we leave home and leap into the deep unknown. Mid-pandemic, Sullivan left the man she planned to marry, sold her house, quit her corporate job, and drove west. The dazzling collection tells that story as it illuminates the questions haunting us all. What possible futures lie on the horizon? What happens when we heed the call of furious reinvention? There are so many things. There are so many things. Why do I do this? Why do I do this? Also, you'll see next week how many books I have on my TBR already. How many physical books I own that I have not read. You'll see in just a few days. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself or what is wrong with me. Anyway, up next is another book that one of you guys told me to get. It is called Sillies, Fancies, and Trifles by Peter Costaglau, a collection of short stories, and I was told to read it for my portal fantasy love. And it's apparently a book of short stories that are just the most whimsical short stories you'll ever read. Let's see how high we can stack this before it falls over. Two! Two books. Okay, awesome. So we have 
The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson, which is apparently a dark book about witches. I actually don't, I don't know much about this at all. It says, a young woman living in a rigid puritanical society discovers dark powers within herself in this stunning feminist fantasy debut. And so I got it. The end. That's all. The other book in here was The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez. And it says, a solitary ship captain unfettered from time, a mute child burdened with unimaginable power, a millennia old woman haunted by lifetimes of mistakes. In this captivating debut of connection across space and time, these outsiders will find in one another the things they lack, a place of love and belonging, a safe haven, a new beginning. But the past hungers for them. And when it catches up, it threatens to tear this makeshift family apart. So, deep space, time travel, and some unknown force hunting all the people. Good. Next. Okay, what is this? What are you? What is this? Oh my god, you're so tiny. What a teeny book. Yeah? Come on. There she is. Yeah, hi. I know. You're so close to the camera. Say hi to the people. Don't do it. She likes to show more than she should. No, 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 no. Jesus. Anyway, this one, this next one was The Mysteries of Thorn Manor by Margaret Rogerson. This is either a prequel companion to Sorcery of Thorns? Yeah, I think it's a prequel companion to Sorcery of Thorns. I own Sorcery of Thorns. I haven't read it yet, but I bought this anyway. So now I have both. Is this video gonna be too long? I mean, I'm unboxing 42 books, so maybe. Drowned Country by Emily Tesh. So I have Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh already, and this is, I think it's a companion novel to it. It's not a sequel, it's not the same. Oh no, it is a sequel. Okay, so I'm not gonna read the synopsis because it's a, it's a sequel. But Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh is the first book, this is the follow-up, and now I own it. Next up is, hell yeah, Briefly a Delicious Life by... Nell Stevens. I've had this book in my periphery for a while, but I don't think I actually realized what it was about. And I have now been told that it's about a ghost that haunts a monastery in Majorca, which is one of my favorite places on the planet, first of all. And the ghost falls in love with a woman who comes to stay at the monastery. So, gay ghosts. Gay ghost love story. Check. Done. Mine. Let's do another Barnes & Noble pre-order. Oh, that was disgusting. Oh, that was such a bad one. You ever get the ick from opening book boxes? Okay, that's better, but that still sucked. This is Never Leave the Dogs Behind by Brianna Madia. Brianna is a woman who I first found on Instagram who kind of came up in the adventure, the Utah adventurer influencer sphere and has since gone through hell and back just dealing with her life. And this is her second novel and I'm very proud of her and I love her and I have this parasocial relationship so I, I feel like I know her. So just, just pick her books up, just buy her books. Next up is Body Shocks, Extreme Tales of Body Horror, edited by Ellen Datlow. Creepy. A creepy book. Oh god, it looks creepy. In these extreme tales of body horror, you'll find the unthinkable and the shocking and more. A couture designer preparing for an exquisitely grotesque runway show. A vengeful son seeking the parent who bred him as a plasma donor. A s that inflicts plastic surgery on And organ harvesting doctors who dissect a living human without any anesthetic. So gross. The people who have short stories in here are people like Shawnee McGuire, who we all know I'm obsessed with, Tana Reeve Du, Carmen Maria Machado, Cassandra Kaw, who I read The Salt Grows Heavy from last year and loved so much, and more. So a short story collection. I've, I want to get more into short stories. I haven't read enough short story collections and this is where I am starting, apparently. Another Barnes Noble pre-order. Come on, do better. So close. You were so close. So 
Another sequel that I have purchased without actually reading the first book yet. This is Sunbringer by Hannah Kainer. This is the sequel to God Killer. And so it's a sequel, so again, I'm not gonna read the synopsis. It's but it's another sequel that I have purchased without reading the original book first. So I've just I just keep digging myself bigger and bigger holes. This feels like two books. What two books are you? People from Pango don't f around. They man, they wrap their books. Here's the funny thing. I will order a book from a, a like a major chain bookstore and the book will come beat to hell. It'll be ripped, it'll the corners will be bent. Meanwhile, I order from Pango and these people wrap the books in bubble wrap times three. Three layers of bubble wrap to ensure that my books don't get hurt on the way home, which I love which I adore. So thank you so much to everyone on Pango. I love you. Yes, two books. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, I'm very excited. Hold on, follow up my ASMR. I am super stoked for, for these ones. So first up is The Center by Aisha Manazir Siddiqui. And this is about a, is it Daniel Krause? Oh my God. I read a book last year called Whale Fall, and it, it was one of my favorite books that I read last year, and I have never heard of a single other person having read it. And it's by Daniel Krause, the very first blurb on the back of this book, which makes me so much more excited. Hey. Anyway, Daniel Krause blurbed this, which makes me so much more excited. Also, by the way, everyone go read Whale Fall. Please go read Whale Fall. The Center is about this school that you can go to and basically you can learn any language that you want in a week. And it's a horror book. So there's gonna be something weird and f***ed up and wrong. That's The Center, I'm super excited. And also in that package is a book called Hollow Planet by Andrew Tolan. This book I have never seen anywhere. I have never heard of it. And I don't think anyone I know has, has read it, but it's about my favorite conspiracy theory on the planet or in the planet, should I say. It has to do with Hollow Earth. And if there's any conspiracy theory that I wish so badly was real, it's Hollow Earth. What sounds cooler than a second Earth inside our Earth where like dinosaurs still exist? Or King Kong lives, depending on what, you know, what realm you're talking about. The back of this says, do we truly know what is taking place on this planet? Have we explored and discovered everything there is to find on Earth? What if everything we've been taught since childhood was nothing more than a careful scheme to keep us in the dark about what is actually happening around us? Daniel Morrison is about to find out there's a lot more going on in our planet than is let on, but more importantly, he's going to find out why. Oh, it's signed. Andrew Tolan signed it for me. Oh my God, thank you. Hi buddy. Oh, <laughs> and instead of a dedication, it just says, oh, you're not gonna be able to read that. It says it was all a dream. Notorious B.I.G. Anyway, Hollow Planet by Andrew Tolan. Next is Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. And this was another book that was a booktube darling last year that I didn't get to. Just like so many other books, there are so many books that I didn't get to that I haven't got that I've just, I've, I've, I'm just behind on. Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang is a horror book about the beauty and wellness industries that make up our society and the things that are expected of, of people in our society, especially women, in regards to our, our physical appearance. Another book to help me read horror throughout the year instead of just in the fall, like my brain tells me I'm supposed to do. I think this is the final one that is a suggestion from one of you people, and that is The Gone World by Tom Sweeterlich. The Gone World by Tom Sweeterlich. And this is about uh, a woman who is kind of a CSI agent who has to solve the murder of a Navy SEAL's family and locate his vanished teenage daughter. The SEAL was an astronaut aboard a ship thought to be lost to the currents of deep time. Knowing firsthand the difficulty of time travel, she believes the SEAL's experience with the future has triggered this violence. So it is a horror sci-fi detective novel, kind of, and it was recommended to me by one of you guys on here. Thank you so, so much. I don't wanna name names for like privacy purposes or anything, but you know, you know, you know who you are and I appreciate it because this looks killer. This looks so much fun. Oh my God. I just opened to a random, I just opened to a random page 
and it's gruesome. His neck opened along a seam and sprayed from him, filling the air with mist. Other seams opened along his arms, along his thighs, and rushed from him for several minutes. His body shriveled, his skin peeled away, the skin of his hands came off like gloves. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, well, okay. Stay. We've got two more Barnes & Noble pre-orders, and then we have the two bigger boxes. And then we're done. So close. So close. F*** you. Oh my god. Ah, three books in this Barnes & Noble package? Oh yeah, there are. So there are three books in this Barnes & Noble package. And hell yeah. And they're all new fantasy or horror releases. And I am. Okay, well, Egg's just- Egg, she just might be here sometimes. And I'm stoked. The first up is The Woods All Black by Lee Mandello. And I have another book by Lee Mandello that, again, I have That I haven't <laughs> read yet called Feed Them Silence. Feed Them Silence and The Woods All Black are both novellas. And this one... It says, The Woods All Black is equal parts historical horror, trans romance, and blood-soaked revenge, all set in 1920s Appalachia. And I know there's been some discourse lately on whether it's Appalachia, Appalachia, whatever it is. I apologize for mispronouncing it, probably. <laughs> so that's The Woods All Black. Oh. You know what? We're out of frame. We're out of frame. I can start a new pile and be safe about it. Oh, oh wait, I have a new pile. What am I talking about? There we go. Also in this box was A Botanical Daughter by Noah Medlock. Finally, so now I can read it this month. I've talked about this in two videos now, and like I've said before, this is about two men raising a monstrous plant daughter in Victorian London. They're attempting a masterwork, true intelligent life from plant matter. Very excited. Okay, the third one in this box was Song of the Huntress by Lucy Holland, another brand new fantasy release. One of the most powerful new voices in myth retelling transforms the story of her and the wild hunt into a rich feminist fantasy. Hoping to save her lover and her land from the Romans, Hurla makes a desperate pact with the Otherworld King. She becomes Lord of the Hunt, and for centuries she rides, reaping wanderers' souls. Until the night she meets a woman on a bloody battlefield, a Saxon queen with ice blue eyes. Queen Aethelberg of Wessex is a proven fighter, but after a battlefield defeat she finds her husband's court turning against her. But now the dead kings of Wessex are waking, and King Ein needs Ethel more than ever if he is to master his bloodline's ancient magic in order to survive. When the women's paths cross, Herla knows it's no coincidence. Something dark and dangerous is at work in the Wessex court. As she and Ethel grow closer, Herla must find her humanity and a way to break the Otherworld King's curse before it's too late. So, this is The Gay Wild Hunt. This is the stunning tale of two great warriors, a war-torn land, and an ancient magic that is slowly awakening. Hell yeah. So, she's also, she's a thick, she's a pretty thick one. Let's see. Ah, a little over 400 pages, it's not that bad. Let's do it. This is the final one. Do it, do, do well. Ugh, almost. The final Barnes Noble pre-order box is A Feather So Black by Lyra Celine. This is a pretty thick one. Yeah, this is close to 500 pages. Wow, wow, it's a big book. No, it's not, no, not, not, it's, it's large. Like, physically large. In a kingdom where magic has been lost, Fia is a rare changeling left behind by the wicked fair folk where they stole the High Queen's daughter, Ayla, and retreated behind the locked gates of the folk realm. Rather than leave Fia an outcast, the Queen takes her in and trains her to be a spy. Cool. Cool. Darkly enchanting and beautifully written. Neat. Okay, so changeling. I, I read like three books about changelings last year. Uh, kind of one right after another on accident. So now I get some more. And then we have two final things, and it's the two big boxes. This is the smaller of the two boxes, so... Oops. Oh my god. Oh my god, what did I order? <laughs> There's so many books in here. Okay. All right. Cool. Oh, so I, I don't only collect books to read. I collect really old books also, and I have this nice collection of really old books that are for display purposes only. And I found another one on Pingo, and it's called Hotel for Dogs. It's called Hotel for Dogs by Lewis Duncan, and it was written in 1971. So it's not crazy old, but it's it's definitely, you know, old enough to be falling apart. So that's Hotel for Dogs. I will not be reading that, but that is for, that is for display purposes. Ah, okay. If you guys remember reading Island of the Blue Dolphins in school by Scott O'Dell, this is the coolest version that I've ever found. And so I bought it. That's it. That's all for that. 
Then there's another old book, a lot of decorative books in this box apparently, and it is a the modern library version of the Odyssey of Homer. She's an old one. She's falling apart a little bit. Oh, she's definitely falling apart a little bit. Oh my god. Oh my god. This was someone's very well-loved book. This edition is so old that they don't have the publication year printed in the book at all, which is awesome. And also, there's writing in the margins. Someone had this, maybe for school or something, and there's annotations in the margins. I mean, this could be from 70 years ago. I don't know. I don't know. I'm so happy about this. This is the coolest thing. Cool. I love stuff like that. I really, really, really love finding old ass books and then seeing that someone a hundred years ago had annotated the book. Cool. Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. And we're following an artificial intelligence woman who's trying to figure out what it means to love, apparently. And this is by the same author as Never Let Me Go, which I'm supposed to be watching the movie version, maybe, in the spring. And I have the book haven't read it, if you can sense a running theme. The next book is River Horse by William Least Heat Moon, which is about a Native American man who sets off aboard a small boat from the Atlantic at New York Harbor in hopes of entering the Pacific near Astoria, Oregon. So it's this man who is attempting to cross America by boat just through rivers. He has to follow 5,000 miles, often following in the wakes of our most famous explorers from Henry Hudson to Lewis and Clark. So that sounds sick. Another addition to my nonfiction collection. Next is What Do You Know? Another old book for display purposes only. Classical Myths That Live Today. Oh, this was a library book also. And this was published in 1958. And it's all about myths, old myths. Very cool. Oh my God, yes. Okay. So Hollow Earth is my favorite conspiracy theory. And my second favorite conspiracy theory <laughs> is Atlantis. Love the idea of Atlantis. So this is The Lost Empire of Atlantis, History's Greatest Mystery Revealed by Gavin Menzies. And this is about the explorers, philosophers, occultists, treasure hunters, historians, and archeologists who have tried to figure out the mystery of Atlantis. Love it. So excited. Very happy. And the last box. The last box is an absolutely massive mother I don't even know how many books are in here. I think the box is too big for the amount of books that are inside of it. Because I don't think I ordered a hundred books from that one. <laughs> I'm not using scissor safety. Okay. Oh. <gasps> what have I done? There were eight books in this box. So yeah, no, the, the box was way bigger than it had to be. So the last eight books of the book haul. Let's go. Where the World Ends by Geraldine McCoffrin. The synopsis says, every summer Quill and his friends are put ashore on a remote sea stack to hunt birds, but this summer no one arrives to take them home. Surely nothing but the end of the world can explain why they've been abandoned, cold, starving, and clinging to life in the grip of a murderous ocean. How will they survive such a forsaken place of stone and sea? Creepy. The Nile by Toby Wilkinson. A journey downriver through Egypt's past and present, which I'm pretty sure is just a history book about Egypt. Then we have Lizzie and Dante by Mary Bly. If you can hear little cat noises, just ignore it. I can't, I can't, I can't do anything about it. On the heels of a difficult breakup and a devastating diagnosis, Lizzie Delford decides to take one last lavish vacation on Elba, the sun-kissed island off the Italian coast, with her best friend and his movie star boyfriend. She sneaks off to a beach where she meets a chef called Dante. Dante shows Lizzie the island's secrets. Lizzie is confronted with a dilemma. Is it right to fall in love if time is short? So it seems as though Lizzie is dying and wants to have a flame in Italy before she goes. So I'm not usually a, oh no, I'm not usually a romance girl, but this seems more like leaning towards literary fiction than romance. Then we have Wild and Distant Seas by Tara Carr Roberts, which is about a woman who's made a home for herself on Nantucket in 1849. Her husband is lost at sea and the sailors who are in the book Moby Dick come and visit the inn that she owns. And then something happens from that night and her choices ripple through generations across continents and into the depths of the sea. In a narrative that follows Evangeline and her descendants from mid 19th century Nantucket to Boston, Brazil, Florence, and Idaho. Cool. Next up is When Women Were Birds by Terry Tempest Williams. It's a really 
cute little addition. It's a non-fiction about a man who loses his mother and is bequeathed her journals, but the journals are all blank. Williams recounts memories of her- Willi what? Oh, Terry Tempest Williams is a woman. My bad. Williams recounts memories of her mother, ponders her own faith, and contemplates the notion of absence and presence in art and in our world. Then What the Wind Knows by Amy Harmon, which has Ireland, it has time travel, and just those two things mean that I want to read this as soon as physically possible. Ireland and time travel, you got me. Okay, our penultimate book is called The Comet Seekers by Helen Sedgwick, and it's about two people who meet on a research base on the frozen ice sheets of Antarctica. They're drawn to each other. One, oh, more Ireland. One is from Ireland and she's an astronomer. One is a chef from France. The two are connected by devastating tragedy, the longing for a fresh start, and an indelible yet unknown bond that stretches back centuries. So it seems like maybe more time travel or reincarnation or something. And then finally, we have come to the last one. Oh, I have done these almost perfectly. The last one is The Orphan Island by Laurel Snyder. Oh, and the blurb on the front is Kelly Barnhill, who wrote The Crane Husband that I read last year, a novella, absolutely adored it. So Orphan Island is a middle grade book. I don't read middle grade, I, I don't. Um, but apparently I'm going to. So there are a bunch of children, orphans, who live on an island, and one day a year a boat appears from the mist upon the ocean carrying one child to join them and taking the eldest away never to be seen again. So it seems like this is gonna be an allegory about growing up, which might really hurt my feelings. Okay, okay. All right, team, we did it. Again, we've done it. This is, this is 42 books, right? This is 43 books. This is 43 books. Huh? huh? <laughs> According to my notes, I was only supposed to receive 42 books. What? 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 Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's 43 because I hadn't written down the coffee table book, the John Krakauer. Anyways, this is 43 books, technically, but it's not 43 books that'll be added to my TBR because the coffee table book and the three or four old books that are just for display purposes, but it's still like close to 40 books that are added to my TBR. I've done that to myself. Anyways, we did it. We got through it. Thank you so much for being here for this show. I'll see you soon. I'll see you in a few days. I am going to be doing my bookshelf tour. Oops. And I, I asked in a little community note if you would rather do a, my entire physical TBR or every book that I own. And the consensus was both. So I'll probably, I'll probably do a full bookshelf tour, every book I own now, and then maybe in a few months I'll do my entire physical TBR where you can see what books I, I haven't read which, you know, maybe I can get it down by then. That's it. That's all. I am very happy to have you here. Thank you so much for being here. And if you can hear me, if you can read the subtitles, I love you. And I hope I'll see you very, 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 very soon. Okay, bye. Zig. Oh, <laughs> this is Zig. Egg. Egg? Egg. Egg. No. No. Egg. They're all new. Egg! Go. Can you stop? Egg. Egg. Can I help you? Next is... Egg. 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 No. Let me make sure my mic is on. <coughs> Brianna is a woman. Yes. This is, what is this? So badly. <coughs> this seems like the kind of book that barely exists. And, nope.
That's mean. That's mean. That's not what I meant. This seems kind of like a self-published book, but it's- No, that's mean too! Feed them silence in the wood all- the history's greatest meal- Meal. History's greatest meal. Lizzie Delford decides to take one last lavish- Lizzie Delford de- Oh, Jesus. Oh my god. Oh my god. Man. Ah. Ah. God. Damn! Oh god. God! <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh my god, we still have summer anymore left! Oh! Yuck. Okay, bye.